from VidCon. And before I go into my review of VidCon, I'm just going to give you my opinion overall about the controversy regarding how they treat their creators. So if you don't know, um, I think it got a lot of attention when Tana Mojo made her video about how she was mistreated by VidCon three years in a row. And I will go ahead and link that in the description. Um, so after she made her video, a lot of other creators, YouTubers, came out and started saying they had the same experience or similar experience as her. So basically how VidCon works and what VidCon is, is it is a giant YouTube convention, basically. And for their lineup, they have what they call featured creators. And those are the YouTubers that they have on panels, that they have set up for meet and greets, and basically that they are asking to come to the convention and help promote the convention and just be their like main people, I guess, kind of like their, their guests, basically. So what happens in a nutshell is that when YouTubers who were not invited by VidCon or who are not featured creators, they normally end up getting kicked out by VidCon because when the featured creators get like a specific badge and it's basically like an all access thing where they can go backstage, they have their own private area that they can relax in and hang out in in between like panels and um, different engagements that they have. So they, they're pretty much in their own little bubble and um, have their privacy and just like places where they can walk around without being bothered. But what happens when people who aren't feature creators show up to VidCon is they don't get any of that access. So if they need to be on a panel or they have an obligation somewhere at VidCon and they try to walk through the convention hall, they get recognized and people mob them trying to get pictures, talk to them, whatever. And so VidCon would reprimand the YouTuber instead of the people creating the chaos. And 100% I hate, <laughs> I hate mobs. Like, I'm not down for that. Um, I think it's just, like, unorganized and crazy. And it, I mean, it can't feel safe for the YouTubers or any celebrity for that matter. Like, if you just, like, run up to them in a huge group of people, that's just, like, scary and not okay, but people don't really understand that and that people have the mentality like, oh, there's this person that I need to get a picture with. I'm just going to run at them. And if you have like hundreds of people with that same mentality, that's how you get a mob. So security would remove the YouTuber, kick them out of VidCon, ban them from VidCon, threaten to arrest them for trespassing, all this crazy stuff when the YouTuber was actually not doing anything wrong. And so I feel like VidCon should be, you know, reprimanding the attendees who are forming this mob or have security somehow form the mob into a line or like do something else to help organize it and help make it a better experience for the YouTuber because it's not their fault and they did literally nothing wrong. <laughs> and I don't know if they could also, instead of having like you know, yeah, have your featured creators, your invited guests, but then also maybe have like another sort of badge or something for people who are still major YouTubers and want to attend the event, but make it so that they're not going to get mobbed and like cause a whole scene and a safety hazard. Um, so that just, that whole thing kind of rubs me the wrong way because I feel like Without the YouTubers, you don't have a YouTube. And without the YouTube, you don't have the fans. Like, you need to treat the people who are making your platform relevant. You need to treat them well. And um, even when these people are getting kicked out, it's not just like, hey, like, you need to leave. Like, I'm really sorry. It's like disrespectful, threatening, like, intimidation. It's not, like, handled in a very professional way in the past. And... So, kind of to counter this, I'll just mention TanaCon briefly. 
is Tana, who I spoke of earlier, decided to throw a rival convention um, in the same location as VidCon, the same weekend, a mile away. You know, this her convention actually got a lot of hype and a lot of attention, and VidCon issued a, not a statement, but they said on Twitter, like, hey, like, you know, whatever conventions you're going to, whether it be TanaCon or VidCon, we hope you're safe and have a good time. And then they also said something along the lines of, like, they realize that there are mistakes in the past and they hope to make some improvements and um, make it a better experience for everyone involved. So it seems like they were, they like, really realized that they were messing up and that they need to do something to make more people feel welcome and maybe change the way that they run things. So it seems like they will hopefully be making some changes. I don't know. I will keep an eye on it in the future to see... Um, if anyone has any similar stories about still being treated horribly and um, yeah so basically after I watched Tana's video I wasn't gonna go to VidCon because I didn't want to give money to a corporation that treats people that way so I bought my tickets to TanaCon that ended up not working out for anyone involved so so instead of having a weekend that was wasted <laughs> I decided to go to VidCon, and pricing for VidCon is in three different tiers, and the earlier you buy the tickets, the cheaper the tickets are. And then obviously if you go the day of the convention like I did, it's going to be the max rate. So I'm going to talk about the prices for the badges, but um, they're all going to be kind of like guesstimates because they're going to change every year, and like I said, I went on the day of the convention. so. This is just to kind of give you a ballpark of like what the expenses could be. So basically they offer three different badges. The first one is a community badge, which is basically like your fan badge. And um, it gets you access to the expo hall and it also gets you access to the lottery for meet and greets. So the way they do meet and greets with creators is you send a list of who you want to meet. And then they just randomly select which creator you get. Um, I missed that cutoff like way long ago, so I knew there was no hope of me getting any meet and greets, which is fine. I love just going to like conventions to go to the exhibit halls and see what else is going on and see panels and stuff. So then the, that badge was $180. And then there is the creator badge, which anyone can buy. You don't have to be like verified on YouTube or verified in any way. You don't have to be for any of these badges. So the creator badge is basically the community badge minus the meet and greet. So you do not have access to the meet and greet lottery. But you do get the creator track panels, which are panels geared more towards helping you learn how to build a YouTube channel, helping you learn how to network or how to monetize your videos, how to you know market yourself properly. So it's more of like an educational type of programming. And that badge was $250. And then the third tier is the industry badge, which was, I didn't even bother looking at how much it was this weekend, but the last time I looked at the website, it was like $700. And I think I looked at that last week or a week before. So it's expensive. I think this weekend it went up to like a thousand. I don't know, but it's the most expensive, like ridiculously expensive badge. And what that is, is basically the same as the creator badge, you don't get the meet and greets, but in addition to the community and the creator panels, you also get access to industry panels. So industry panels are basically a higher level of the creator panels, so you're still getting tips on how to run your business and um, your videos and things like that, and you also get chances for networking. But the people that you're having panels with or networking with are like top tier like YouTube executives or um, really high up people in the industry. So it's more of like a hardcore like networking, like get your face and your name out there and meet the right people. So I mean obviously the dream badge would be the industry badge, but that's so expensive. Um, so I went with the community badge and what I really wanted was to create a badge, but it was just too much to do in one weekend considering I already spent my money on TanaCon 
So now I'm spending an additional amount of money to go to VidCon. So it was the cheapest option for me. Um, and there was still plenty of stuff to fill my time. But um, I would definitely do Creator next time. So it takes place at the Anaheim Convention Center, which is just like a giant convention center that's right by Disneyland. And there's the exhibit hall, and then there's like three floors of conference rooms where all the panels take place. And um, there are a lot of people. There's also like an outdoor section where they have food trucks, and they also have like carnival games. There was a stage out there. Um, so there's just like a bunch of stuff that you can walk around and do. And the exhibit hall is crazy. It's huge. They had that giant like bounce house maze thing, and then they had like a Nerf gun, like laser tag type of thing. They had the whole Nickelodeon like Double Dare set up, which was awesome because I used to watch Double Dare when I was a kid. I loved the show and I always wanted to be on the show. And um, you actually got a chance to go through the obstacle course. So I did that because dream come true. Um, and then they have the certain creators that they have their own merch, they have their own booths. And, um, what else? There were people, there were booths for Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, um, Adobe, like, different camera companies. It's very, um, techy and, like, focused on digital entertainment. And the setup was awesome. Like, I didn't have any problem getting in or out. I didn't have any problem purchasing a badge, like, on one of the last days of the convention. Like, everything was went very, very smoothly. I parked at the hotel that was right across the walkway, and it was $26, which is a lot, but, I mean, it was convenient. It was right there, and um, anywhere else would be probably just as much, at least $20. So that's where I parked, and there was security everywhere. There were police officers everywhere, but there was not a security check, which is odd. Um, no one went through my bags ever. I did hear that if you had a meet and greet, they were checking people's bags before you get into the meet and greet, which is good for the creators, you know, keep them safe. But then for the rest of us, there's no, there's no safety check. So it's, that is kind of uncomfortable just considering the world nowadays. Um, so that's a little concerning. But there were a lot of police officers and security everywhere, so it was kind of like, uh, like this is sketchy. But then also, I still felt safe because there were there was law enforcement around. Uh, there are panels all throughout the day, different topics, and the creators are on the different panels. In addition to the panels and the exhibit hall, they also have um, events at night. So. They have like little like concerts or performances and stuff. So tonight uh, is their last night. It's the whole thing is four days. So it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So I went Friday and I went Saturday. Um, so tonight, what they had is a prom that I don't know if it's still going on. It started at like nine o'clock at night. They had a stand-up comedy show. They had um, they have movie nights. So they'll just like play a recent movie and everyone can just hang out and watch movie. Um, and then they also had a, I think they called it like the awesome show or something like that tonight. And that was so cool. It's like in this giant auditorium and you go and it's basically like an hour and a half long concert performance type of thing. And they have a bunch of different performers. So pretty much was there, uh, Gabby Hanna sang, the Merrill twins sang, uh, Joja Siwa was there. She performed, um, and then they had, like, the BuzzFeed Try Guys. They were there. They also did a little, like, Try Not to Laugh challenge, and they did um, kind of, like, a couples game with certain YouTubers. It was actually really fun, and it was, like, a really good production, and I was pretty impressed. And um, I just, the whole time, like, everything I felt was, like, so well put together, and everything's like flashy and colorful and like enticing like there were so many photo ops they have like so many different little areas set up where you could take pictures and it was very aesthetically pleasing they had food trucks there was food inside the venue there were so many freebies like it was just everyone was so nice too it was like a really inviting atmosphere like I had an amazing time 
and um yeah like it was just a lot of fun for me and it was just really cool walking around and seeing all these different exhibits and i got a lot of swag so you get this bag it has vidcon and like whatever their sponsors is so they had a bunch of candy sponsors and then you also get the program 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 and um it has like information on everything and then it has the schedule in there um and so that was pretty cool and yes vidcon australia Austra oh my god i cannot talk australia they do it in australia also that is going to be in melbourne august 31st through september 2nd uh, let's see oh my so a double their t-shirt like how cool is that this is like childhood like what like dreams come true so excited and then um they also had these little double dare pins so i got one of these guys you know how they have to go through like the like the you there's like that obstacle with the mouth and the teeth and then like yeah that's what this is and it has slime on it so that was really cool i'm really excited about that and then they had a booth for Truth, the like anti-tobacco company. And all you had to do was like text um, your name to a number and you got free merch. So I got a free t-shirt and it says priorities and it has like an X on the sleeve. And I thought it was cool because it doesn't say like truth or like don't smoke. It doesn't say anything like super, I don't know, like not controversial, but like political or like anything like that. It's just like priorities. Everyone has priorities. Cool. I can actually wear this shirt. So I got that. And then I got another bag from the Hollister booth. That was cute. So Hollister was in the outside like festival area and you had to do a challenge. And my challenge was to stand on one foot and eat a fruit by the foot as fast as I could. So I did that and um, so I got a shirt and I got a bag. I didn't even actually look at the shirt. Blah, 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 blah. That's cute. So, that's the back and the front. So that was cool. And then why did I get this? Oh, there was like a, there was a Lego stand and you could go in and like make your own little gif and after you did that, they give you a little, a little parrot dude that you can make out of Legos. So I'll probably end up doing that. And that was all the swag that I got. Um, yeah, I also got a VidCon decal and I put it on my laptop at their merch booth. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, so I, I would... Okay, so as far as my experience for VidCon goes, I would say I would give it like a 9 out of 10. And the only reason I'm not giving it a 10 is because of the safety check. And, um, yeah, I mean, because of the sketchy creator treatment, I don't really know. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I hope they're improving. But as far as my experience goes, 9 out of 10. I had a lot of fun. I will definitely be going back next year. But I will be doing a creator badge so I can learn how to be a better YouTuber. Um, so yeah, check it out if you are in the LA area or in Australia. And that is it. I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.